Hi and welcome back to The Cottage. Today I want to share some practical and easy habits that can help you keep your home tidy and clutter free in just one minute. Maintaining a tidy and clutter-free home can seem like a daunting task when we consider all that needs to be accomplished in order to achieve this. That is why this video is so important. It shows how we can take this large goal and break it down into micro habits. Many of us do have a spare moment here and there throughout our days, but usually not large chunks of time to dedicate towards this purpose. So this video is going to show you how you can take those little moments and funnel them and focus them into a larger goal to make a big difference in your life. Now, I want to make a quick note here before I get started and say that homes are meant to be lived in. They're not going to be tidy and clutter-free 100% of the time. That is definitely not the goal. At least it's not my goal because I want to live in my home. What we're looking for is to get our homes to a spot where they're not overwhelming us, making us feel defeated and like we never can get it to a spot of tidiness. And as such, the 27 habits that I'm going to list out are very realistic, very achievable, they're things that we can do naturally throughout our days. They're not robotic exercises that make our homes look pristine 100% of the time. The first habit that you can incorporate for a clutter-free home is to make a list. Many of us, like I said, have little moments throughout our day that we have free time, but our tendency is to want to do something a little bit mindless with that time, maybe scroll through social media or check our emails, something like that. So the idea here is to make a list and that might take a minute or less to do and write down things that you could do during those spare moments of time that you have, something productive to make that time really count in your day. Let the light shine in. One of the most simple habits that we can do is to basically open our curtains daily and let that sunlight fill our spaces. The reason that this is so helpful is because there is something psychological that happens when we shine a light on our situation. So if we're living in the darkness, we're almost kind of avoiding those messes and that clutter, but when we open up the windows and we can see things more clearly, it might cause us to want to take action and make some changes. Keep your shoes right by the door. This is helpful for a couple of different reasons. Number one, it means you're not wearing your shoes throughout your house, tracking in mud, dirt, other things that you might not want in your space. And it also contains those shoes in a location that is easily visible and accessible when you need them. So when you're leaving the house, you know exactly where your shoes are. You're not going on a treasure hunt trying to find them. Use the clipboard method for important mail or mail that you're going to get to in a short amount of time. We usually can easily see right at the mailbox which items are junk mail and which are going to be important to our lives. So go ahead and separate them at that moment, immediately recycling or shredding any of that junk mail, and then use a standard clipboard to clip any papers that you are going to need to have attention to. The reason that I love this system and I prefer it over putting them in some sort of basket or bin to go through later is because it is more of a vertical style of, of temporary storage because you can easily flip through it and see what is all in there. And also it encourages me to keep that pile very small because once it gets too large, it's not gonna fit within the clip. Use what you already have. My goodness, I wish that I would have adopted this habit much earlier in my life. The amount of single use, single purpose gadgets and gizmos that I bought was pretty crazy. So what I'm talking about here is, for example, if you don't spend a lot of time in your kitchen, can you just use your simple cutting board and knife to chop up the things that you need rather than going out and buying a fancy food processor? Or maybe you can use a reusable grocery bag to double as a beach tote instead of buying a dedicated beach tote for that purpose. Another great way to use what you already have is to shop your spaces. When you're looking to change up decor, for example, you can go around and find items from other rooms in your home to help you spruce up the room that you're trying to decorate. You don't always have to buy something new. You can use something you already have in a new way. Make your bed. This one is pretty obvious, but many of us still don't get it done. 
Such a large percentage of a bedroom floor area is taken up by the bed itself, so seeing it all messy and unkempt can really set the mood for the entire room. I encourage you to just take that one minute to tidy it up. This is another habit that can have many positive psychological benefits. Contain the clothes. If they're not on your body, they need to go somewhere, and I'm going to argue that there's only one of three places that they should go. Number one, if they're dirty, they should go directly into a laundry basket or even into the washing machine itself. If they're clean, they can obviously go straight back into your closet or dresser drawers. It's that third category that really seems to trip people up, and that is the clothing that has been worn. It's not really perfectly clean, but it's not dirty either, and you plan to wear it again very soon. So for this category, I am encouraging you to, instead of throwing those items on the floor or draping them on the back of a piece of furniture, to find a containment spot. That might be a hook behind your bathroom door or a small basket in your closet where you can go to retrieve those items of clothing to wear them again. Speaking of clothes, if an item doesn't fit or you don't like the way it looks, go ahead and declutter it right then and there in one minute or less. This habit can be particularly helpful to manage kids' clothing because I don't know about you, but if I don't take that item out of rotation right away, I'm going to forget that it doesn't fit and the kids are going to try to wear it again. Be mindful of books. Reading is such a great thing both for information gathering and for enjoyment. But keeping a large stash of books can get overwhelming and add a lot of clutter if you aren't careful. I know there are many who have made the switch to ebooks and that can really cut down on clutter. But if you're like me and still enjoy holding a physical book, be mindful about them. Checking books out from a library and returning after reading is a great clutter-free option. Rearrange your furniture. I absolutely love this habit, but I know what you're thinking. That's going to take me longer than a minute to do. And true, that may be the case, but I promise that if you have some various arrangements that you like to do and you use them on rotation, it really won't take as long as you may be thinking. So how does this help to keep your home clean and clutter-free? Well, our rooms can get stagnant to the point that we don't even see the clutter that we have. By moving things around, new life is given to the space and that one minute or five or 10 minutes of effort might even jumpstart a more thorough cleaning or decluttering session. Okay, let me balance out a habit that might take longer than a minute with one that will take less. In fact, this one will take less than a second. Let me demonstrate. No, that's it. Say it with me. No. This is a complete sentence that takes less than a second to say, and if we can be honest and actually use it, it can really help cut down on clutter. Think about this for a moment. How many items do you have in your home that are clutter? They're just there, you don't like them, you don't use them, but they're there because you failed to say no, whether because of guilt or otherwise, these items became part of your life. I bet you can name a handful without even looking around. Don't even let these items come into your home in the first place. Just say no. Teach the kids to pick up after themselves throughout the day. You can fit this into your daily rhythm by pairing it with meal times, for example, and have them spend a minute or two just tidying up their spaces. Maybe they're doing a craft project that they can tidy up or playing with toys that they can put away. Keep a blanket basket near the couch. This will mean that you always have a cozy blanket accessible when you need it, and it also will help your couch look more tidy. Push in the chairs. This is a habit so simple that we often overlook it, especially in the way that it affects visual clutter. If you don't believe this can contribute, take this little test. Go to your dining table, your kitchen island, or home office, and pull out the chairs in a haphazard way. Does it feel unsettling? That's because our brains crave order. Getting yourself and your family into the habit of pushing the chairs in neatly can ease our minds and lead to a home that feels tidy and pulled together. Another way to reduce visual clutter is to decant pantry or staple items into uniformly sized clear containers. Now, of course, this one is not a necessity. It's more of a personal preference. I use this habit for some items in my home, such as cereal, flour, sugar, and spices, but not for everything. There's clutter you see and clutter that gets packed away, and the kind that gets packed away is easier to ignore honestly, and so we need to develop habits to make sure that that doesn't happen. 
Start a new habit of using smaller containers within the larger containers of your cabinets, closets, or drawers. This will help to ensure that they don't get packed tight and filled with clutter that you aren't using. Keep a donation bin in your vehicle. Even as a minimalist family, we are constantly finding items that we can declutter, and it helps to have a central location where we can put those donations and have them all in one spot. I have found the trunk of my vehicle to be the best place for this for a couple different reasons. The first is that I'm always seeing it when I'm loading things in and out of the vehicle, and so I'm reminded that it's there. When I used to keep the donation bin in my closet, I would sometimes forget that it was there, and then when I was out and about and wanting to donate, well, my donation bin was back at home. That's the second reason why I like it, because it's right there with me. If I'm driving past the donation center, I can just bring that box or bin in and take care of it right then and there. Get your kids involved and invested in their personal decluttering journey. Now, this is particularly helpful right around holiday times when they may be receiving some new items, such as birthdays or Christmas. Just sit down with them, talk to them about some items that they may no longer be using or want to have around, and help them make those decisions for themselves. This is going to be great because it's going to allow them to develop their personal sense of charity and understanding that they don't need to hold on to everything. They can let things go and that will bless other people. And it also is going to make room for those new items so that we're not just constantly bringing things in and adding to the clutter. Wash your shower curtain. Yes, those little hooks can be annoying to deal with, but taking down your shower curtain and throwing it in the washing machine is very simple to do. It takes less than a minute and it's one of the easiest things that you can do to keep your bathroom looking great. Don't bulk buy. This one can help you cut down on clutter by not doing something, and it also might get me a little bit of pushback from people who view this video. But hear me out. The tendency when we bulk buy is to buy more than we actually need. Even with our large family, I find that buying our groceries every other week is more than sufficient to keep us stocked up. Now, if you want to keep a little emergency stash of food or toiletries, and that is important to you, I don't see anything wrong with that. Just be mindful that not everything needs to be purchased in bulk to meet our immediate needs. Do a nightly sweep or vacuum. Allocating even one minute per room that needs it can go a long way to keeping your home clean and clutter free. I find that the kitchen and dining room in my home are the main spots that benefit from this daily habit. Get in the habit of bringing your dirty dishes back to the sink when you are done using them. And when you get there, add a little bit of water and rinse them out. Now, there are some people who will argue that you should wash every single dish, dry it, and put it away all when you use them because that will keep your home clutter free. That is not my personal philosophy. I think that is a little bit extreme and it's not something that would work well in the flow of my day. And so what I like to do instead is to do the rinse technique, keep them in the sink. I kind of view the sink as sort of the laundry basket for clothes where it's a containing spot where I can keep everything until I'm ready to do it. I do the dishes once every day. I do it in the evening. It's part of my nightly reset and that works really well for me. I don't have a dishwasher. I don't want one for my kitchen, but if you have a dishwasher, that might be another good idea. Rinse the dishes, put them directly in the dishwasher so that they're ready for when you run that cycle. Group the electronics in one central area. I'm talking cords, plugins, and devices. It works well for us to double this as a charging station where at the end of every night, those items come home to this place and they all charge there so they're ready for the next day. And this really helps to streamline the process and it ensures that we don't have electronics strewn throughout the house where people can't find them when they need them. Wipe down your counters after each use. This habit has the added benefit of ensuring that you get into the habit of putting away any items that you were using, putting them away before you wipe down, such as the toiletries, bathroom products that you may be using in your bathroom, or the small appliances that you may have used in your kitchen. Because honestly, wiping around all of these items would be super annoying, and so it kind of tricks your brain into doing both of these tasks at one time. Reset the couch. Fluff up the pillows, straighten any blankets, and clean up any crumbs. The philosophy with this habit is that it is similar to making your bed. The couch sets the stage for the entire living room space. It's such a large piece of furniture, and so having it tidy makes the entire room feel more tidy too. Keep common products in a central location. 
Categories of items such as over-the-counter medications, band-aids, batteries, pens, and pencils all can benefit from being available to everyone in the house. This system makes these products easier to find and access with less digging around. And finally, do a once a week, one minute declutter. Make this habit fun by asking every member of the family to go around together for one minute and look through their personal items, seeing what could be decluttered, donated, or even thrown out. And this can really add up quickly. For example, my family of seven, if we all did this on a weekly basis, and each found only one item, we would have nearly 400 items by the end of a full year that could be decluttered. And that's going to do it for this list. That is 27 simple, easy, practical, one minute habits that you can incorporate into your life to have a more tidy and clutter free home. I hope that these ideas were encouraging to you and you were able to write some of them down on your own list to um, tackle when you have those spare moments throughout your day. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I hope that you'll stop by the cottage again really soon.